You don't need to be a professional archaeologist to make remarkable discoveries. Incredible finds can be made by anyone, anywhere, at any time. The thrill of unearthing history knows no bounds, and it doesn't matter who makes the discoveries, as long as they're made. Let's explore some discoveries that illuminate the wonders of our shared history, reminding us that the past is still alive and waiting to be unraveled. Chess is old, but it's not the oldest board game in the world. In fact, it's not even close. Here's a discovery that illustrates that point perfectly. In January 2022, archaeologists in Oman found a 4,000-year-old stone board for a prehistoric board game while excavating a Bronze Age settlement close to the modern-day village of Ain Bani Saida. This part of Oman has proven to be unusually rich in archaeological treasures, with a cluster of recent finds turning up in an area of just 10 square miles between the massifs of the Jebel Hajar mountain range. This stone artifact has been identified as a board game because of the pattern of cup holes and marked fields on its surface, which is consistent with the style of other stone boards that have been found in Mesopotamia and India in the past. All of the boards appear to be about the same age, so historians don't yet know who invented the game and in which direction it spread. They also don't know the rules, as nothing that would explain how to play the game has ever been found and nor have any pieces. Among the highlights is a 2,300-year-old pair of Celtic scissors, unearthed in a cremation grave in Munich, Germany, in early May 2023. The remarkably preserved scissors retain their sharpness and shine, leaving archaeologists astounded by their exceptional condition. Professor Matthias Feil from the Bavarian State Office for the Preservation of Monuments describes the find as very special and praises the craftsmanship of the object. The discovery occurred when a disposal crew searching for World War II ordnance at a Munich construction site encountered suspected archaeological structures. That led to the finding of the tomb within a square structure formed by wooden posts. It dates back to the 3rd or 2nd century BCE. This period saw the Celts start to cremate their deceased and bury their remains in pits alongside grave goods. Alongside the scissors, the grave contained a folded sword, a shield, a spearhead, a razor, and a fibula, all of which display impressive craftsmanship and indicate the high social status of the deceased. The scissors served multiple functions, including cutting hair, textiles, and sheep's wool, while the ritual destruction of the sword suggests a symbolic offering for the afterlife. Finding just one valuable ancient artifact makes a great day for an archaeologist, but finding a whole treasure trove of it is so much better. At the start of 2022, archaeologists in Poland unearthed a collection of thousand-year-old jewelry that almost certainly belonged to a member of the Pomeranian elite. The elite-level jewelry set, which includes a beautiful solid amber ring, was found during the excavation of a gravesite on one of Poland's most remote islands. The site also turned up a second ring, an iron knife still inside its leather sheath, a pair of bronze buckles, and a solid bronze bowl. The grave belongs to an as-yet unidentified male who lived close to Osterwhite during the 11th century. Polish historians already know that Osterwhite was a regional center of power between the 11th and 14th centuries, but they don't have much specific information about who held that power or how they lived. It's to be hoped that there's more to come from this site. A name and rank for the person who was buried with the amber rings would be a good start. It's also likely that a marble statuette of the Buddha was unearthed at the Temple of Isis in Berenki, Egypt in April 2023. Dating back to the second century, it provides compelling archaeological evidence of Buddhism's presence in ancient Egypt. The Roman era harbors along Egypt's Red Sea coast, particularly Berenki, played a vital role in trade between the Roman Empire and India. Ships from India brought various goods to Berenki, including pepper, textiles, semi-precious stones, and ivory. The newly discovered Buddhist statue standing 28 inches tall was found in the temple's forecourt. Its intricate craftsmanship showcases the figure holding his draped robe and adorned with a halo symbolizing his radiant mind. A lotus flower representing purity grows by his foot. The marble used for the statue was of exceptional quality and sourced from a quarry south of Istanbul. Local artisans in Berenki crafted the sculpture, which was likely obtained by an Indian trader as a votive offering for the Temple of Isis. In addition to the statue, archaeologists uncovered two second-century coins from the central Indian Satavahana dynasty and a Sanskrit inscription dating to the reign of Emperor Philip the Arab. In recent days, a leaked image on the internet has sparked astonishment and curiosity around the world. 
According to unconfirmed sources, the photo was allegedly taken on Mars during a supposed secret space mission conducted by an unknown international agency. The image, which has been circulating in forums and specialized groups, shows what many believe to be a living creature on the Martian surface. But is it real? At the center of the image, prominently displayed, we can see a figure resembling a large animal with four legs and a long curved tail. The creature, nicknamed by internet users as the Guardian of Tyros, appears to be moving across a rocky terrain, typical of the photos sent from Mars by rovers like Curiosity or Perseverance. The creature's silhouette resembles that of a feline, but with features that defy the biology we know here on Earth. According to rumors, the image was leaked from a New Zealand government server, with the country allegedly cooperating in secret with other powers on a joint mission to the Red Planet. But none of this has been officially confirmed. Could it just be a well-made hoax? A visual illusion caused by rocks? Or perhaps a real leak that somehow slipped through the cracks? Some image editing experts claim there are signs of manipulation, while others say the photo appears to be authentic. What is most intriguing is that the creature seems to appear in two different positions, as if actually in motion, which would rule out the possibility of it being just a rock or a shadow. Real or not, this image raises a question that has haunted us for ages. Are we alone in the universe? And what do you think? Could this be the first evidence of life on Mars? Or are we just facing another internet prank? The crown of Bilge Khan would be a good start. It's also been a good start to the year 2022 for archaeologists in the Willamette Valley area of Oregon, USA. A team of volunteer archaeologists there has recently confirmed the discovery of a huge collection of Native American artifacts, including 14 examples of an obsidian tool known as a biface. In both form and function, a biface is effectively a hand axe. The professional archaeologists who've inspected the tools since their discovery believe that they might be up to 4,000 years old. The material used to make the tools came from the obsidian cliffs of the Central Oregon Cascades, which was as valuable to the Native Americans as a trade commodity as it was a construction material. Some of the tools appear to have been left unfinished, which historians say is unusual. Because of the value of obsidian, it's unlikely that it would be thrown away even if someone's attempt to make a tool out of it went wrong. Any excess or unwanted obsidian would be traded with neighboring tribes for something more useful. The impression we're left with is that someone was forced to abandon the tools in a hurry 4,000 years ago and never had the chance to come back for them. Those of you who are concerned about the history of the tools, you may be able to find a link to it in the description below. The Crown of Bilge Khan a magnificent golden crown was unearthed at the Bilj Khan complex in Kashu Tasidum, Mongolia, in 2001. Dating back to the 6th to 8th centuries during the Central Asian Second Turkic Khaganate, this crown showcases the exceptional craftsmanship of a brilliant but sadly anonymous local artist. Discovered alongside a golden belt, it's believed to have belonged to Bilj Khan himself. The crown bears a resemblance to the headgear depicted in the bust of Kul Tegan, possibly representing Bilge's brother. Excavations of the complex revealed a structure with inscriptions and war scenes where the crown was found surrounded by silver flowers, silver deer statues, and other valuable objects. The crown is made of thin sheets of gold with five upright panels, featuring a phoenix and intricate flower motifs. With small perforations, it's believed to have been attached to another item, possibly a hat. Following restoration, the crown of Bilge Khan is now on display at the National Museum of Mongolia, showcasing the rich cultural heritage and metallurgical skills of the Eastern Turks in Central Asia. The most notable of the silver deer it was found with accompanies it in the display. Archaeologists in Jermuring look for them. Those of you who are considering a career in archaeology might have second thoughts after seeing this next discovery. In late 2021, a team of researchers had the unenviable job of rooting through some ancient toilets in Jerusalem. Their job was to find ancient stool samples and use them to determine the diet and health of the city's first Temple-era residents. They were successful in their disgusting mission. The team found several examples of 2,700-year-old human feces beneath a stone toilet inside what was once a magnificent estate. 
We now know that while the owners of the estate were very rich, they were also very ill. The feces is full of intestinal worm eggs, including penworm, tapeworm, whipworm, and roundworm. Any one of these infestations could cause pain, diarrhea, nausea, and discomfort. A combination of two or more of them could cause malnutrition, damage to the nervous system, and in extreme cases, death. The diet of these people was rich in beef and pork, so it's likely that bad cookery skills or poor understanding of hygiene was to blame for the parasites. Archaeologists in Germering, Germany made a fantastic discovery in January 2023. A Bronze Age well filled with ritual offerings which is believed to be over 3,000 years old. The well is incredibly well preserved, with its wooden wall still partly damp from the groundwater. This has ensured that the organic materials discovered within it have been equally well preserved, including a total of 26 bronze garment pins, amber beads, two metal spirals, an animal tooth wrapped in metal to make a pendant, and over 70 ceramic vessels. The condition of the vessels indicates that they were carefully lowered in the water rather than dropped or thrown. As such, it's thought that they were part of an offering to the gods made during a time of drought when the water table had dropped significantly. The hardships faced by the settlers at that time may have spurred them to sacrifice their most valuable possessions to their gods in the hope that their fortunes might improve. As part of the ongoing archaeological dig at the site, around 13,500 artifacts have been made, mainly from the Bronze Age and early Middle Ages. It's expected that some of these finds will be made accessible to the public later this year in the Jermuring City Museum. Discovering ancient artifacts allows us to say that hygiene was to blame for the parasites. Life in the Roman military was hard. Most recruits probably didn't expect to survive a full 20-year career. But there were some nice perks for anybody who did. We know that because in December 2021, archaeologists in Turkey discovered a bronze military diploma while excavating the ancient city of Per in Turkey. The diploma is exactly 1,898 years old and was presented to a man named Cassilius Anticus upon completion of 20 years in the military during the time of Emperor Hadrian. Aside from this commemorative diploma, Cassilius also earned a full Roman citizenship and the right to marry. The inclusion of Roman citizenship as a reward implies that Cassilius wasn't born in Rome or Italy, and so Cassilius may not have even been named. As many as 100,000 of these diplomas are thought to have been awarded by the Roman army, but only 800 are known to have survived to this day. The one awarded to Cassilius Anticus had several pieces missing, but it's still in better condition than about 600 of the other examples. It would have been a precious item to Cassilius and his family, so it's odd that it wasn't buried with them. All of us have seen a painting of a medieval-era battle in the Germering City Museum. Discovering ancient artifacts allows us to delve into the lives and beliefs of those who came before us. One such fascinating relic is the Antiochus Cylinder, a captivating piece dating back to approximately 250 BCE. Crafted by the mighty Antiochus Soter, a Greek king of the Seleucid Empire, this devotional cylinder, written in traditional Akkadian, unveils the grandeur of his reign. As we read the translated text, we're transported to a time when Antiochus, the powerful king of Babylon and ruler of numerous lands, sought to leave his mark on history. With his own hands, so it's claimed, he molded the bricks that would lay the foundation of the majestic temples Asagala and Asida. Through his devotion to Nabu, the wise and esteemed god, Antiochus yearned for prosperity, triumph over his enemies, and a legacy that would endure. The Antiochus Cylinder not only reveals his ambitions and piousness, but also provides a glimpse into the ancient world, where kings and gods held immense power and dreams were etched into the annals of time. Should we take the text at face value? Absolutely not. But the people ruled by Antiochus would have been expected to. Imagine standing in the middle of a battlefield. All of us have seen a painting of a medieval-era battlefield, with soldiers riding into battle on the backs of huge warhorses. In our imaginations, warhorses are massive creatures with fearsome tempers. The reality may have been very different. Just as the average human is taller now than they were a thousand years ago, so are horses. Scientists in England have been recently studying the remains of medieval-era warhorses and have found that most of them were less than 14 hands high. That means they were about the same size as the average present-day pony. The remains of 2,000 horses were examined as part of the study, with the oldest coming from the 4th century and the most recent from the 17th. 
The biggest horse they found, which came from the grounds of Wiltshire's Trowbridge Castle, measured 15 hands high. That's the same size as a small, light-riding horse today. It'd be far too small to consider entering into a competitive horse race. The battles of the past look and feel a little different if you imagine all the warriors riding into them on tiny horses. Imagine standing in the awe-inspiring Bimin Valley, gazing up at the colossal Buddhas that once graced the cliffs with their serene presence. These towering figures, carved into the mountainside over 1,500 years ago, were a testament to the rich cultural heritage of the region. The Buddhas of Bimin, located in present-day Afghanistan, stood as magnificent symbols of Buddhism's influence along the ancient Silk Road. One stood at a staggering height of 160 feet, while the other reached an impressive 120 feet. These majestic statues, adorned with vibrant colors and intricate details, were marvels of artistry and devotion. They witnessed the rise and fall of empires, the passage of time, and the ebb and flow of human history. Tragically, their legacy was shattered in 2001 when they were targeted and destroyed by the hands of ignorance and intolerance, the terrorist cowards of the local Taliban who ordered their destruction. Despite their physical absence, the spirit of the Buddhas of Bamin endures, reminding us of the enduring power of art, faith, and the need to protect and cherish our shared cultural heritage. Restoration projects have been discussed, but have thus far come to nothing. Subscribe now and turn on the bell so you don't miss a thing. Fascinating discoveries await you in every video. Thanks for your support. See you soon.